and with one another and let us say oh I love you bro, 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 bro. Next Friday evening, okay, we will be singing that again as we will what, greet one another, showing the love of the Lord as brothers and sisters uh, in Christ. Do you love that, church? You love that? Yeah. Amen. Okay, I've been missing this song for quite a long time. Okay, now, the sermon tonight is more appropriate for couples. Okay, I will, I'll, I'll giving you this uh, forward that this is much more likely appropriate for couples. However, it doesn't mean that the singles will not benefit from this sermon. Even though you are single, for sure, you will learn from the Word of God tonight. Why did I say that the message tonight is more appropriate for couples, especially for husbands and wives? Again, simply because today is February 14, and it is Valentine's Day. And for this occasion, I made this sermon based from a love story in the Bible, okay? Based from a love story, in the, you know what? There's a love story in the Bible. The first love story in the Bible, the general one, is the love of God to us. However, even though it is very true, there's a lot of love story in the Bible. You have the, the love story of Mary and Joseph, the love story of Moses and Zipporah, the love story of Boaz and Ruth, okay? And... One love story that I like is also the love story of Jacob and Rachel, which I will be sharing with you tonight, which I entitled True Love, Jacob's Love to Rachel, based on Genesis chapter 29, verses 1 to 30. Okay, So if you have your Bibles with you, you can open it with me in Genesis 29, verses 1 to 30. And the key verse or, or the scripture reading that has been read tonight is just simply the key verse. But before we move on on studying this word of the Lord, this love story, I would like to clarify first that this story is a narrative. Okay? Genesis 29 and among others, uh, story in, in Genesis is a narrative. When we say narrative, it is not only a story. It is not only a story. Okay? It's simply a narrative because it is really true. It is not a fiction. When you say story, it could be real, it could be fiction. But when we say narrative, it is definitely true. Now, according to a book on how to read the Bible for all its worth, a guide in, stand, in understanding the Bible by Dr. Gordon Fee and Dr. Douglas Stewart, there are, there are a lot of principles okay, to understand in, or in, in interpreting the Old Testament narratives. But I would like to mention two in order for us to be clear. Okay? The first one is, what people do in narratives is not necessarily a good example for us. Frequently, it is just the opposite. Okay? So bear that in mind. Bear that in mind. The second principle is, most of the characters in the Old Testament narratives are far from perfect and their actions are also not perfect. Now, why did, why did I mention this? I mentioned this simply because what we will be learning tonight from the story of the love of Jacob to Rachel is we will see unfaithfulness. Unfaithfulness and also polygamy. When you say polygamy, having many wives. Monogamy, one wife or one husband, 
But polygamy is having many wives. And we will see that here in the story of Jacob tonight. Again, what are the two, two, two principles in interpreting or understanding the Old Testament narratives? First, the people here in the narrative, just like Jacob, the Bible character that we will be studying tonight, is not necessarily a good example for us. Meaning to say, polygamy and being unfaithful, okay, is not encouraged, okay? And it is not a good example for us to do because it is very far, okay, from the will of God. What it simply tells us is this, that even though the people or the Bible characters in the Old Testament, even though they, are, they have weakness, weaknesses, even though they are sinners just like you and me, but God, okay, God in His grace and love could change the life of the person, of that sinner person, of, the, of, the, of, of, of that uh, weaknesses of that person for His glory. Amen, church? And that is also true to you and to me. All of us are not worthy in the sight of God. If there is someone here who is worthy in the sight of God, please raise your hand and this church is not for you. Okay? Even me, I will not say that I am worthy before God. Actually, I kept on saying this, that uh, uh, maybe, just maybe, I am much more sinner than you, than you are. Okay? But we are unworthy. All of us are unworthy. But this is the point. The unworthiness that God has seen in us, the sins that God has seen in us, okay? He chose you, He chose me in order for Him, what? To change our sinful lives into a very pleasant one for His glory. Can I hear amen for that church? Okay, so very, please bear this in mind, okay? Because we will be looking the story of Jacob tonight. Not his weakness, not his weakness, but the truth, the principle of his love to Rachel. That is what we will be looking tonight. And why do we need to learn these things, church? Well, basically because the love today is no longer true in the light of what we will be learning tonight. Okay? What God wants for you and for me to know is to have this true love. Therefore, let us open our minds, let us open our hearts in order for us to learn the message of God. Are you ready, church? Are you ready, church? Yes. Amen. Now, there are three basic characteristics of true love that I would like to share with you based here on, Jake, on, on Jacob's love to Rachel here in Genesis 3, 29, verses 1 to 30. And the first one is this. True love is inspiring. Please say it with me. Inspiring. inspiring. Why inspiring? Basically, true love is inspiring because you can do difficult things easily. You can do difficult things easily. Okay? Uh, so yeah. Based on this passage, when Jacob saw Rachel for the first time, they had met, okay? He had this what we call love at first sight. Okay? And that love was true because Jacob was inspired and he did difficult things. Okay? Let us read from verse 1. It says here, then Jacob continued on his journey and came to the land of the eastern peoples. There he saw a well in the field with three flocks of sheep lying near it because the flocks were watered from that well. Check on this. I underlined the words. The stone over the mouth of the well was large. When all the flocks were gathered there, the shepherds would roll the stone away. So meaning to say, church, because the, the stone over the mouth of the well was so large, it will take shepherds, men, many people, many men, to roll it away from the well's mouth. And then they will water sh the, the sheep. And then after that, these men, whether they were, what, two, three, four in numbers, they will return again the stone to its place over the mouth of the well. That is very clear. That, that was very clear, church, okay? Now, let's jump on verse 9. While he was still talking with them, referring to Jacob, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she was a shepherdess. When Jacob saw Rachel, daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and Laban's sheep, he went over and rolled the stone away from the mouth of the well. Imagine that. How strong is Jacob during that time? He's alone, right? Again, according to the passage, it would take two, three, or maybe four people, men, shepherds, to roll away the stone from the mouth of the well because it was so large. It is so large. 
But when Jacob saw Rachel for the first time, okay, he was inspired, filled through love. And he, only one, alone, by all his might, removed that stone, bloodstone, from the mouth of the well. Imagine that, church. Imagine that. Again, why? Why is this so? Simply again, because Jacob was really hit in a oh, bullseye, okay, in his uh, in the heart for Rachel. And he even asked, okay, he even asked the shepherds to go away with their sheep because it's, it is not yet time to water the animals, according to Jacob. Okay, why? Simply because, why? Jacob wanted to be alone with Rachel. Okay, he wanted to be alone with Rachel. If we will keep on reading on uh, the story. And isn't that true, guys? Isn't that true? Remember when you were in love and inspired that even though you lack sleep, even though you lack sleep, okay? Because what? You had a date or maybe uh, you had a date and the next morning, the next day, you need to work or you need to study again. But because you, are in, you were inspired and you were so in love, okay? Even though you do not have enough sleep, but still, you can do work, you can do what? You can do the study. You are alive! Why? Because you are so in love and inspired. <laughs> is that true, men? Hey, men, is that true? <laughs> Let us also ask the women. Women, is that also true to you? Yes. Oh, yes, of course. These, are, these things are true. These things are true. Because he was inspired, okay? And not only that, not only that, another thing that, it, it, that is so interesting here in the story of Jacob here is this. When he first saw Rachel, the daughter of Levan, his mother's brother in Levan's sheep, she said there, he went over, okay? And then in verse 11, Jacob kissed Rachel and began to weep aloud. Again, as far as the principle is concerned, what is the uh, principle in interpreting or understanding the Old Testament narratives, the characters of the Old Testament narratives are very far from perfect. Guys, if you would see a girl for the first time and then you would kiss that girl, don't expect, okay, that you will not be hit, okay, <laughs> and, uh, and expect that definitely you will have a black eye, okay? So don't do what Jacob did here, okay? But again, if you will analyze verse 11, who do the kissing? Who do the kissing? Jacob. Who do the weeping? The crying? Are you sure it is Rachel? Read again the passage. Then Jacob kissed Rachel and began to weep aloud. It was Jacob who cried aloud, not Rachel. Why? The question is why? Why did Jacob cry and not Rachel? Well, sim. Is it because Rachel uh, is bad breath? That's why when Jacob <laughs> kissed her, oh, bad breath, ah! Okay? Or is it because Rachel smells like sheep? Because she was a shepherd or smells like a goat? Smells like what? Some, uh, someone who is, uh, what, smelly? Is that the reason why Jacob, when he, sh he kissed Rachel, he cried aloud? No, I don't think so. That is not, that is not the, the meaning, okay? My view here is this. Jacob wept aloud because after his long journey, okay, in obedience to his father, the reason why he took that long journey, because in obedience to his father, that his father said, go to the, to the place of your uncle, the brother of your mother, and take a wife there. This is what we can see here. Genesis 28. So Isaac called for Jacob and blessed him and commanded him, do not marry a Canaanite woman. Go at once to Padan Aram, to the house of your mother's father, Bethuel. Take a wife for yourself there, from among the daughters of Laban, your mother's brother. So this is the reason why, 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 why Jacob cried after kissing Rachel. Why? Because he's saying, my journey is worth. Okay? This is the daughter of my uncle. Okay? Whom suppose that I, I will marry. And my journey is worth because she is so beautiful. And she is so lovely in form. Later, we will see the, the description of Rachel here. So he cried. He cried a lot. Okay? That his journey 
is really, really worth. Now, why did I say that that uh, Rachel is lovely in form and pretty? Check this out. Genesis 29, starting verse 16. Now, Laban had two daughters. The name of the older one was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah had weak eyes, but check on Rachel. But Rachel was lovely in form and beautiful. Oh, yes, Lord, thank you. Maybe that's the expression of, 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 of Jacob. He cried after kissing Rachel. He, he, he cried aloud. He wept because he's saying, Lord, this is the answer to, to, to my prayer. My long journey is worth. My obedience to my father is worth. Why? Because she's so lovely. And again, in our term, lovely in form, what does that mean in our own term? Sexy. But then again, we need to cl clarify it first. Sexy or lovely in form here is again based on the term or based on the concept of the people then. Okay? Maybe, maybe, and it is definitely not only maybe, it is tr uh, really true, the, the, the word sexy or lovely in form is based on every culture. Am I right? Here on our present time, sexy is what? Skinny. Having good curves and skinny. That is sexy. But in other, in other culture, other region, sexy is bulky. Right? So if you're bulky, if you're weighing 200 pounds, okay, and you have, and you have a lot of layers in your body, and you're a woman, okay, go to a place, culture, where bulky is sexy, then definitely you are sexy. Don't go to the region where sexy is skinny, okay? And not, not only that, in another, in another region, those people or those women who have what? Long, long neck is sexy to them. You know that? The Kayan tribe in Burma and in Tibet. Okay? For the Kayan women, a tribe in Burma and Tibet, the coils confer them a tribal identity associated with beauty. So for these tribal women, imagine this coil, this uh, steel in their, in, in their neck. As early as four years old, five years old, their parents would put their, that coil on their neck and then it, it, it was being added year after year after year or months in order for their neck to be what? Elongated. Okay? They check on the, check on the internet, uh, Kayan uh, women tribe or giraffe women, and this will be what? Appeared to you. And imagine how long the neck of these girls. Imagine. Of course, in our own definition of beauty, sexy, or lovely in form, this will fail. Am I right? <laughs> who among you guys would love to marry and would be attracted to this kind of woman who have what long neck? Can I see some hands, guys? Come on, don't be shy. <laughs> so, again, in our own definition, we will not love this kind of girl. But for them, for them in the tribe, oh, these women are beautiful. These women are sexy. So, regarding to the passage that we, will be, that we are studying tonight, it depends on the culture then. So, when Jacob saw Rachel, and he saw that Rachel was lovely in form or sexy, okay, again, it, it depends on their definition of the sexy. And the passage, the Bible, does not say how sexy is Rachel was during that time. But, the mo what more important to know, okay, that I would like to share with you about the love, the true love of Jacob to Rachel, is not only because he had this what love at first sight uh, with her, but also because he was inspired. He can do difficult things easily, which also our experience to most of us. But love is also inspiring because it is inside the will of God. Say it with me, will of God. Yes, it's inside the will of God. Upon seeing Rachel for the first time, again, Jacob more, more likely had what uh, a love at first sight with her. And I would say that that is true love. Why, did, why will I say that that is true love? Well, it was true love because it was inside of the will of God. The will of God, as far as the principle of His word is concerned, is that God's people should look and have a partner of their own kind. Okay, that's what we can see in the, in, in the Word of God. Let us check some, this, some of these passages. In 1 Kings chapter 11, it says there, King Solomon, however, loved many foreign women besides Pharaoh's daughter, Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Sidonians, and Hittites. They were 
uh, from nations about which the Lord had told the Israelites, you must not, again, you must not intermarry with them because they will surely turn your hearts after their gods. Even though, again, the story of Jacob and Rachel is very far and previous from these passages that it tells that they should not marry other foreign nationalities. But the issue is this. As early as Jacob's time, God, who is the main character of the Bible, is revealing, he is already revealing his will that his people should not intermarry with other people. Instead, they should take a wife for themselves that is of their own kind. And that is the same instruction why Isaac said to Jacob, go to your relative, to the brother of your, of your mother, and take a wife there. That's the reason why. Now, if we will apply this, this in our present time, does this mean that we should only marry our own relatives or cousins? Just like Jacob. Rachel was his cousin, first cousin. Okay? Or does that mean that we should not marry other nationality? That if we are Filipinos, we should only fi marry Filipinos? If we are, what, American, we should, on we should only uh, marry American? No, I don't think so. That is not, that is not the, the, the answer there. The Old Testament verses that we mentioned, saying that God's people should not intermarry with other nationalities, and the instruction of Isaac to Jacob to take a cousin as his wife, simply conveys that they should not be with other or different faith. Because for sure, those different nationality would turn them away from God. That is the reason. You must not marry with them because they will surely turn your hearts after their gods and you will turn away from the true God that you are serving. That is the point. That is the issue. So today, it's okay if you want to marry other nationality. That is your, that is your call. Okay? That is your call. It simply means that the reason why uh, the word of the Lord is saying to God's people not to intermarry with other nationality because they will be surely what? Be turned away from the true and living God. And this is also exactly what the great apostle, Apostle Paul in the New Testament says. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, the apostle Paul said, Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? So that is the meaning today, church. This, that is the meaning today. It is not saying to us that we need to marry our relatives, our cousins, brothers, sisters. No. Or we should only marry the same nationality just like ours. No. That is not the, that, that is not the issue. The issue here is we should marry people with the same faith like ours in order for us not to be departed from worshiping the true God. Amen, church? Amen. And you know what? If that is the love, if that is really true love, it definitely truly inspires. Definitely truly inspires. One of the problems that we are encountering while, I was, while uh, we were in the Philippines as a pastor, I've been encountering so many problems regarding that. For example, if you would marry a person with different faith than yours, the first problem you will encounter is this. Where will you get married? In his church or in your church? Okay? Now, if you have children, the second problem that you will encounter, where we will get this, uh, where, where we will what, dedicate or baptize our kids? In your church or in my church? Okay? Then you have what? You have what you call this, your, uh, your children with you. And it is Sunday, or if it is not Sunday, any other worship day. The question is this, where will you go and worship? In their church or in your church? That's the problem. What if the, 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 your, your kids will go to school? In what school you, you will uh, enroll your kids? In a school where, like his uh, faith, or in a school like your faith? See the problem? That is the point. That's why, as far as the Bible is concerned, it will be much more inspiring. True love will be much more inspiring if you will have the same faith. Can I hear amen for that, church? So that's the first one. The first thing that I, that, that I see here in the story of Rachel and Jacob. Okay? True love is inspiring. If that is the second, uh, first characteristics that I see here, 
The second one that I see here about true love, based here on the love of Jacob to Rachel, is this one. True love is persevering. Say it with me, persevering. Persevere basically means carry on despite the hardships. Okay? And this is the part of the story which I really, really love. Why? According to Genesis 29, again starting verse 18, it says that Jacob was in love with Rachel. Okay? Why? Again, because the first time he saw her, he fell in love. And he said, I'll work for you seven years, referring to Laban, his uncle, the, the father of Rachel, in return for your younger daughter, Rachel. Okay? Laban said, it's better that I give her to you than to some other man. Stay here with me. Verse 20, so Jacob served seven years to get Rachel, but they seemed like only a few days to him. Why? Because of his love for her. Oh, <laughs> guys, can we do that? <laughs> you work, you court. You know what? In, in some other culture, for example, in the culture of the Philippines, I do not know in other parts of the world what your culture is. During courtship, courting, courting period, the, the guy would go to the, to the house of the, the one that he's courting and he will serve literally, literally on that place. Okay, in the, in the olden days, uh, especially in the province, the guy would uh, get firewoods, get firewoods for the, so that the, the house of the girl would, would, would have firewoods in order for them to cook. Not only that, he would go to the well and fetch water, okay, and fill all the drums, <laughs> okay, the drums and the water of, of the girl that, whom he's courting. Not only that, okay, uh, oftentimes, even washing of, of dirty clothes, the, the man would do that. Okay? I do not know who among you here, brothers, who did that when you're courting your, your wife. Can I see some hands? Did, did, did some of you did that? Okay? None? Well, it's because it is no longer being practiced today. But you know what? In, in, the, old, in the olden days, it was being practiced. So the same with Jacob. But the point here is this. Jacob, what? Did this for how many years? Seven years. And according, according to verse 20, those seven years was nothing. It is like a few days because he really loved Rachel. Hmm. He perseveres. Love is persevering. Not only that, the second one is this. True love is persevering despite of the hardships, but it is even more what persevering despite of more hardships. Why more hardships? Let us look at this passage. After Jacob served Laban for seven years for Rachel, to get Rachel, again, he said after he served seven years, Jacob said to Laban, give me my wife, referring to Rachel. My time is completed and I want to lie with her. So Laban brought together all the people of the place and gave a feast. Of course, because it's a wedding. Okay. But when evening came, he took his daughter, who? Leah. Leah, not Rachel, the older one. The one who had weak eyes. And gave her to Jacob, and Jacob lay with her. When morning came, there was Leah. So Jacob said to Laban, What is this you have done to me? I serve you for Rachel, didn't I? Why have you deceived me? Laban replied, It is not our custom here to give the younger daughter in marriage before the older one. So that's the reason. Finish this daughter's bridal week, referring to Leah, then we will give you the younger one also, in return for another seven years of work. Imagine that, church. If you are Laban, what will you do? Let's walk out. Okay? I can't bear this anymore. Seven years and then another seven years, total 14 years. Oh boy, that's the problem. And you know what? What was the answer or the reply of Jacob? And Jacob did so. He finished the week with Leah and then Laban gave him his daughter Rachel to be his wife. Jacob lay with Rachel also and he loved Rachel more than Leah. And he worked for Laban another seven years. Again, Jacob, an amazing man who's willing to work not only for seven years, not only persevering, 
but persevering for more problems, okay, for another seven years. Oh boy. But you know what? Again, another characteristics of true love, it perseveres. It does not only carry hardships, but it can carry more hardships. You know what, church, in this present time, how long does a guy court a girl? How long does a guy woo a girl? One month? One week? Three days? One hour? Imagine that. You know what? In my observation today, guys today, okay, though I am not generalizing, take note of that, I am not generalizing, okay, guy, a guy court a girl for a maximum of three months. That is the maximum, three months. And if, a girl, if the girl don't, uh, okay, still give her sweet yes within that span of time, the guy who's courting her would woo another girl and thought that the first girl whom he courted did not like him. Am I right? Is that right? Maximum three months. After three months, the guy would stop courting the girl and he would woo another girl because he's thinking that this girl does not like me. So I would look for another girl. Besides, there's still a lot of lovely and pretty girls out there. Okay? That is now the thinking, the reasoning of those people. Okay? But you know what? I believe that if, okay, that the, if the girls, okay, the girls are doing that simply because he, she is checking the sincerity of the love of the guy. Especially among the Filipina women. I do not know in other nationality country, but definitely the, the first reason why the girl would not give his sweet yes to the, to, to the guy is simply because she is testing the guy if the guy would really, is really sincere on her. Am I right, girls? Girls, are you there? Am I right? That's the point. So if the guy has no perseverance, then we know what will happen. If the guy has no perseverance, if he would easily give up, we know what will happen. Okay? What will happen? You know what? When I was a, when I was a, a kid, a child, I remembered and I can hear stories. I don't know if, if that's still happening now that there's this guy who would court uh, his girl for one year to two years. Okay? Again, let me, let me ask a question here. Who among you guys courted your, your girl or your wife for two years? Two years. Can I see some hands? How about a year? No hands? Okay. How about five months? <laughs> no five months? Oh boy, you are really now in the modern times. How about three months? You just courted your wife or girl for three months. No, no hands. Maybe one day, a day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> the point is this. The point is this. Okay. Perseverance. Persevering. Okay, the reason why the, the girl would not definitely give his, uh, her yes first is because he wants to check the sincerity of the guy. And if the guy would persevere, then that's it. Then that's it. He would have the yes. But then again, guys who do not have perseverance would easily give up. And you know what? Not only on the court, courting our relationship. If we will apply this thing today, even for the husband's and wife's relationship, if there's a big differences between the husband's and the wife. And if they could not what, uh, uh, reconcile, what would they do? What would the husband and the wife do if they have differences and they could not settle it? What will they do? Go on separate ways. Now, where is the perseverance there? Where's the perseverance there? Okay. Again, as I had said earlier, this sermon is somehow much more appropriate for husbands and wives. For the husbands and for the wives who are here tonight, what is the vow that you, have, that you mentioned when you were, what? Uh, taking your vows on the altar. That only, what? Death 
could separate you. Not sickness, not troubles in this life, only death can separate you. So if you want to be separated from your respective wives or husbands, you know what to do. <laughs> you need to pray for the, for the other one to die. Because if he or she's dead, then you're free. That's what the Bible is saying. Okay? But the, my point is this. There is no what perseverance in the love today, even for husbands and wives. That's why there's a lot of, a lot of what you call this, uh, according to statistics, the, the statistics of, of having divorced or annulment or separated is much more higher than the statistics of getting married, of those people who are getting married. That's the point. So what a sad fact, church. But then again, what is true love? What is one of the characteristics of true love? Perseverance. You need to persevere. Persevere. Okay? That is the second True love characteristics. Characteristics of a true love. If the first characteristics that we have read is what? True love is inspiring. And the second is what? True love is persevering. The third and the last characteristic of love that I see here and we need to learn in the story of Jacob, the love of Jacob to Rachel is true love is growing. Could you please repeat it with me? Growing. growing. True love is growing. Growing. Growing what? Growing despite of circumstances. Genesis 29, verse 25 and following. When morning came, there was Leah again. This is, uh, we, 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 read this, uh, we read it already. What did, uh, what you call this? Uh, Laban said, okay, it is not our custom here that the younger should uh, be married. So it should be the, the, the older. That's why I give you the older one. But if you will work for another seven years, I will give you the younger, Rachel. Okay, so we, uh, Laban did that. But this is the point, church. This is the point that I would like us to see. True love is growing. Again, despite of the circumstances. What is the, circumstance, the circumstances here of Jacob? What is the circumstances here of Jacob that I would like us to see? Again, check, church. When Jacob labored again for another seven years for Rachel, for, for Rachel during that time, was he already married to Leah or not? Yes, he is definitely married to Leah, very much married to Leah. But, and yet again, he's working for another seven years for Rachel. Now, another question. Because he's married to Leah during that time, uh, is it impossible for them that uh, they have no sexual union as husband and wife between Jacob and Leah? Is it impossible that there's no sexual union be between them? during that time? I don't think so. Because they are husbands and wife. Actually, basically, on the first night, <laughs> okay, after Jacob already, what, uh, finished the seven years, he had already a sexual union with Leah. So what I want us to see here is this, that while he, he was still working for another seven years for Rachel, he was very much married to Leah and as husbands and wife, they are fulfilling their duties as husband and wife to each other. For Leah, definitely she's fulfilling her duty as a wife and responsibility to Jacob. He's, she's doing that. And at the same time, on the other hand, Jacob also is fulfilling, was fulfilling his duty to Leah as, as the husband. Okay, that's the point. Now, but the point is this. That is the circumstances of Jacob. But the point that I would like to see us here is this. Even though, even though uh, Jacob has this relationship with Leah, and even though she's still working for Rachel for another seven years, but still, his love is growing and growing and growing and growing. That's my point. Amen? His love for, for Rachel keeps on growing and growing and growing every day. You know what? For other guy, maybe for other guy, it would say, okay, I give up. I give up. Besides, I, I had already a wife, Leah, so I will settle on Leah and I will not pursue Rachel. But that's, that's not the, 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 what the, the situation or the, uh, the issue here in, in Jacob, of Jacob. Still, he keeps on working for Leah, for, for Rachel, I mean, for another seven years. So, seven, 
14 years all in all. Again, what is the, the issue here that we are talking? The characteristics of love, but not the exact what? The exact thing that we can see here. Again, earlier, I clarified it. What the Bible is teaching us is not to be polygamous. Okay? Because Jacob here has two wives. Jacob and Leah, sisters. That's not what the Bible is teaching here. As we had, uh, as we had learned earlier, it is the opposite. It's the other way around. What we can see here is the love. Okay? It should be what? Growing despite of circumstances. Another one. It should also be growing year after year. That's another point that I, would, that, that I see here. Seven more years working for Rachel. Instead of what? Instead of the love diminish, but it keeps on growing and growing and growing every day. Day after day, year after year, until he finished the another seven years. And according to the passage, if the first, if the first seven years was, was just like a few days for him because of his love for Rachel, I also believe that that is also be the same description for the another seven years that he worked for Rachel. It would seem to be few days only for Jacob because of her love, or his love, I mean, for Rachel. Now, what the... What can we learn from, from this point, church? Again, true love should be growing. True love should be growing. For husbands and wives, okay, your love for one another should not be the same. Should not be the same love that you had for each other yesterday, the other day, the other week, the other month, last year, and the years that had passed. Let me repeat that. Husbands and wives, your love for each other should not be the same love that you have or that you feel yesterday, the other day, last week, last month, last years, and the years that had passed. Amen? Husbands and wives, can you say amen? Amen. It seems very difficult. But that's the point. True love should be growing. And it is growing. To make an illustration, if on the first years of your marriage, if your love to one another is knee-high, first years of your marriage, now that you have been married for, what, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, your love for one another should be six-footer now. Not knee-high. It should not be the same as Nehi during the first years of your life as husband and wife. It should be growing and growing day after day, month after month, year after years, and now you have been married for 20 years or so. Well, definitely, your love for one another should be six footer high or more than six footer high. Why? Because love should be growing. It should not be the other way around, that it should be diminishing, diminishing and diminishing. Okay? That is not true love. That's the point. That's the point. That's the first thing that I see here. And that is the reason why a lot of husbands and wives are what? Getting split, divorced, annulled, going their separate ways. Why? Because their love for one another does not grow. Does not grow. And you know what, church? This is also the same love that God has been given to you and to me. Every day. Every day. God, when He looks at us, He inspires. He, 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 all, he is always inspires. Okay? His love for us is inspiring. And our love to the Lord should also be inspiring. Despite of the fact that we are sinners, then God kept, kept on forgiving us, accepting us. It should inspire us. Amen? The love for God to us is also persevering. Despite of the fact that every day, every minute, of our lives, we keep on sinning against God. But you know what? God keeps on loving us. His love is persevering. He keeps on loving us. No matter what. Whether our, our, our sin is small or big, it does, God does not care. The only God thing you is, I love you. And that is what matters. I love you. His love is persevering. And His love to us is also growing. The love of the Lord for you and for me keeps on growing and growing every day. And that is also the love that we should have, okay, especially for the couples tonight. 
So this is what we have learned. In summary, true love is inspiring, true love is persevering, and true love is growing. Okay? It is easily to be remembered. As I end the word of the Lord, this is the application and the challenge that I would like to leave to each and every one of us. Be sure that your love is true. Is our love true? Well, we can only differentiate or classify, define if our, if our love is true. Well, tonight we can be sure that our love is truly true. By what? First, by making our love inspiring, by making our love persevering, and also, you know the third one, by making our love growing. This is, these are the characteristics of a true love. Amen, church? Amen. Let us come to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this story of Jacob, especially of his love to Rachel. Again, Lord, even though they are Bible characters, but as we have learned tonight, their characters are too far. The, the, what, what we have seen on them is too far from, from, from your godly traits and characters. We should not be, Lord God, polygamous or whatsoever. But what you are teaching for us tonight here is our love should be inspiring, persevering, and growing because that is the kind of love that you want us to have. Because that is the kind of love that you are showing us and giving to us, to each and every one of us. So, Lord God, for this month of love, may the love that we have, Lord God, is true. Not only selfish love, that it is more on, on us, on us, on us but the love that we really what share to one another. So, Lord God, we pray that may this true love, Lord, be seen in us. We give you glory. We give you praise. And all of the people of God who has true love tonight will say, Amen. God bless you, church.